Hi guys, it's Laura in Shadow. We just did our morning brush cuddles and that's something I'm getting very often questions about on Instagram. Who's Phoebe? <laughs> so people are very often asking me what kind of brushes we are using and how I exactly groom Shadow. So I thought I could make a short video, show you the brushes and explain a little bit. I also filmed our um, today's brush cuddles in full time, so I'm going to post that as well uh, as a separate video if you want to know how long it takes and if you want to see the entire process. It's actually pretty relaxing. Uh, so um, I think the best thing to start would be to show you the brushes and explain a little bit, but we're also going to need a puppy. Shadow, here, here, black, black, and boom. So uh, before I start brushing shadow, um, the first thing we do in the morning is to go on a walk so that he already had his exercise. And then when we come home, he gets his breakfast, I have my breakfast and right after that I brush him so he's, he's not all wiggly or antsy. I mean, he's an, uh, in general a very calm doggy. Uh, but um, if your pup is younger and if your pup is full of energy, and then it's definitely something you want to do before you start brushing them. So I will move the camera a little bit closer and point it at Shadow so that you can see what I'm doing. I just asked Shadow to lay down and to lay on the side, but he's a little bit antsy because we already did the brush cuddles, so it might take a while. That's Shadow. Brav. And boom. Brav. Brav. So now I'm going to take the pin brush. That's the first brush we use. I'm going to keep, baby. I know it's going to take just a minute. So, and I brush his entire coat. I always start around his neck and you always have to be very gentle. Um, the fur of a husky is different at different places. It's a little bit shorter on the legs. The backside of the legs is again longer. The fur on the belly is quite long but not as thick as around his neck so it's a little bit easier to when you brush to touch the skin so you have to be always very mindful of that because you never want to hurt your puppy you always want to make it a pleasant time so i always start around his neck and work my way through to the back and i also lift the front leg a little bit so that, that i can uh, that i can brush the chest and so on. More about that is in the full length video. So I'm not gonna go over the um, entire procedure in this video, but just to give you an idea. So that's the pin brush. Um, a little bit of fluff will get caught in this brush depending on whether your dog is blowing fur uh, currently or whether it's just the regular grooming. So we brush daily, so this is a very little fluff. Um, then I have, I have here the undercoat rake. Now, these um, bristles um, are the, the bris bristles. I always say it the wrong way. Baby, shadow. I think we need a doggy treat for this. Boom, boom, brav. So these bristles are a little bit thicker and pointier, but they are not necessarily super sharp and they have a different length. So there's one row longer in the back and the first row is a little bit shorter. And that helps you to get out all the loose undercoat. So what I like doing is, especially when I'm uh, brushing around the head, I kind of hold the skin very gently around his head when I start brushing to the back so that it's not pulling. You always have to imagine it's very similar like brushing your own hair. You would not want to do anything harsh at the ends and just pull on it. You want to work your way through very gently and especially around the neck where the fur is really thick I like brushing sometimes also to the side and then again to the back and sometimes even a little bit upwards but while I'm always being careful that I don't scratch the skin and I work my way like this all the way through sometimes you will notice that there are sections on the body of your pup where the fur is again a little bit thicker so if, if it gives you a little bit more resistance don't yank or pull, be really, really gentle. Make sure it's always a really good experience for your pup. So that's the undercoat rake. Now we get another doggy treat so that he's gonna stay with us for another minute. Boom, baby, boom, 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 boom. 
He's such a good puppy. So let me move the camera again with the pup. Now I have here this comb. Um, this is a really helpful tool, especially here around um, his face and also on the legs where the fur is a little bit shorter. And again, never pull. When you feel a little bit resistant, hold the skin above it and maybe move a couple of times gently until you will be able to work your way through. And that's how this one works. Maybe we have two more brushes and then you can go and play or just chill somewhere. And then I have here the slicker brush. Now that's an amazing brush, but it's a brush that you have to be very careful with. Shadow, baby, here, here, baby. Platz, platz, brav, brav, baby. And boom, ach, boom, boom, baby, boom. Brav, brav, he's such a good boy. Even though he doesn't want to, he just comes because mama told him to. It's gonna take two more minutes and then we're done, baby. Then you can go. So the slicker brush, um, the, the bristles are pretty sharp. So what I like doing is just to test how much pressure you can apply. I brush with it over the back of my hand. If it would hurt the back of your hand, then it would hurt your pup. You don't wanna do that. So it just gently brush and this is exactly the pressure you want to apply on the fur there's no need to force it um, because it works its way very nicely through the coat and it will collect wonderfully all the loose fur now there are a couple of places where i use it extremely carefully one of them is the belly just be super gentle and rub it work very slowly instead of just you know yanking it through because that could hurt your puppy and if you would hurt him, it would stick with him and it would be kind of hard to go back to where you were and you would have to kind of start over. Just make it always a pleasant experience, especially if you do brush them daily like I do. It doesn't need to be 100% perfect every single day. If you brush a little bit less over one area, you can catch up the next day and it's fine. Baby, I promise one more brush and then we're done. <laughs> there you puppy treat and then i have here this brush this is a brush with natural bristles so ideally you would have something with sisal or with bamboo i've been using it for hercules and he loved it so this is the brush that i call the cuddle brush it's very soft and it just gives the coat a very very nice finish it makes it really soft and it kind of spreads all the oils nicely and that's a brush when you apply gentle pressure you can brush any part of your pup with that the tail the paws the belly even between the legs in the back but always always be careful especially where you can almost see skin be very 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 gentle Brav, baby so he's been such such a good boy and i think i'm just gonna let him go while i will be explaining the rest of the stuff that i have because um, he was already a little bit annoyed with me and uh, normally around this time that's his quiet time so I'm just gonna let him go so that he can chill somewhere on the sofa or <laughs> on his puppy bed. Brav, Adelon. It's okay baby, you can go. Usually between the pin brush in between the undercoat rake or right after the undercoat rake I start taking care of his paws so I have a paw spray with aloe vera and that's moisturizing spray so you should wipe your paw uh, not your paws of the paws of your dog clean and then you can use this spray daily he does not like me to spray it on the front paws so I usually spray it on my hand first and then I dip his paw into my palm because, again, he doesn't like it. And he's okay with me spraying this on the back paws. So this is the first thing. And then I use this uh, protecting paw balm because when Shadow came to us, his paws were really um, hard and you could tell that no one really took care of them. And so I started using this and they got so much better. They have this slightly um, thicker skin so that the paw beans are protected, but it's not the super thick layer 
where he could hurt himself. So, so that's the one we're using. So I usually work with doggy treats, especially for the front paws. With the back paws, he's fine. And what I like doing is taking the paw balm and giving just a little bit on the back of my hand, much more than this, but um, so that I can easily work my way through. And uh, when he gets a little, you know, curious and wants to lick his paws, then I get, I tell him to lay down, uh, lay on the side, give him a doggy treat, and then I continue. The amount of fluff that I'm brushing out currently on a daily basis is about that much, so that's what we brushed out today. It looks like quite a lot, but when I squeeze it, you can see it's not that much, especially when you consider shadow size. He's a very fluffy dog. So he's been blowing his fur, which means shedding the undercoat for the summer, uh, for about four, maybe four and a half weeks, and the amount I would brush out daily was considerably bigger. And then it gradually decreased, and um, then I was left with that on average. So some days it's a little bit less uh, right now. Uh, and one more thing we do, but we don't do that on a daily basis. So what you've seen now, the brushes and the paw balm and the paw spray, that's something we're doing daily. But I would say like once a week, I also take care of his ears. So I have here these wipes. Um, you can clean ears and eyes with that. I think maybe even the nose, but I'm using it just for the ears. And I take one wipe and very gently, I mean, I put it over my index finger and move in very gently into his ear, just like you would move, you know, through your ear. I'm not applying any pressure, just being very, very gentle and cleaning the ear area. Then I ask him to move to the other side and do the same on the other ear. And of course I give him doggy treats and he's fine with that. Um, that's something, however, you have to teach your pup. So we are working with a clicker. So we're doing the positive reinforcement with the help of clicker that kind of also um, works as a signal where you can be a little bit more precise so that the dog knows what he's being rewarded for. And um, what you can do is, especially if your dog is young, when you play with him or when you cuddle with him, touch his paws uh, or her, so touch their paws and um, give them dog a treat and tell them they've been really good and do it regularly, touch their ears and make them used, you know, help them to be used to people touching parts of their bodies so that they understand it's nothing bad and reward them for that. And eventually you'll be able to also clean their ears and their paws. It just takes a little bit of time. You always have to be patient and only work with positive reinforcement. It's it's just the best you can do and it really pays off and anything else than that is just cruel. There's, it's not necessary to be mean to animals or to punish them. They don't think the way we think, but they understand 100% when they're being rewarded. So it's kind, it's effective, and it's also better for your pup. What I have seen in stores very often is pin brushes that have the um, natural bristles on the other side. So it's basically like a double-sided brush. So that's also one thing you could have instead of these two. Uh, so yeah, let's go over the brushes again. Pin brush, undercoat rake, comb, the slicker brush, and then a soft brush with natural bristles. And that's all you need. It's perfect. And there is no downside in brushing your pup daily because it also massages their skin. It creates a really nice bond uh, between you and your pup. And it's a nice cuddle time for them. It also kind of keeps them mentally busy. And that way you really take great care of their fur so that there will be no tangled undercoat, especially for huskies when it's getting warmer. When they would have tangled undercoat, it would increase the heat they feel and that would make them feel very uncomfortable. So especially during the warm time, it's really important to get rid of that so that they can feel more comfortable and so that they can deal much better with the heat. And um, you also at the end end up having less fur around the house. So as I said, there is no downside. So that's pretty much it. I will link here in the right corner the full size video where I brush shadow. And if you have any further questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And that's all. So thanks for watching.
I love you guys so much. And make sure if you have a pup, take really, take really, really good care of them.